Another person that will be out in Texas tomorrow and Saturday is our next guest, Sam Pittman, the head coach of the Razorbacks. Coach, I don't, I don't know why. I'm not a betting man, but, man, if I could have gotten that bet that uh, your last game against Missouri State would have been your most difficult game of the year, I, I think we, we, would, we would both be in <laughs> Vegas collecting our checks right now. Hey, man. I mean, you know, Paul, we, we played a fine Missouri State team. They played well. But, you know, we turned the ball over three times, and we didn't tackle well, and they have something to do with that. We didn't cover well. So we, we've had a long week this week of trying to make ourselves better along with getting prepared for a really, really good Texas A&M team. Yeah, and, and I wonder because, I mean, you know, I've been in Arkansas twice recently, and, and I know that first, uh, the first two games were, were a difficult chore. Uh, it's natural that young people are going to let up. I know coaches try hard to stop them, but sometimes, Coach, uh, do, you, do you figure that players are just simply going to do whatever they want no matter what you and your staff say? I think that's the fight, to be perfectly honest with you, and it's the fight of the side of the helmet. You know, uh, the, it's a fight of how much the players respect the side of an opposing team's helmet. It's uh, uh, because we, I thought we had a wonderful uh, practice the week before Missouri State. But, you know, we went out there and did some things that we normally don't do and turned the ball over. And uh, certainly we didn't tackle well. I think they got over 200 yards of yak yards on our tackling and. And those, those things, you know, I take that because that's my responsibility. Uh, and, you know, I think we'll play much better, but we're going to have to in order to beat A&M. Yeah, listen, I, I, the psychology of football has never been perfected. Uh, everyone's still trying to figure it out. Uh, but in terms of this game, uh, this was – you had two breakthrough moments early in the last season. The first was against Texas, and then you pretty much slammed that door in against against uh, the, the Aggies. Uh, I know how important it is. Uh, do, do you, you don't have to get your players ready, but as you approach the game, what are you looking for from your team other than all the Heisman talk about two of your players? Well, we really have to start fast on them. You know, uh, they they uh, are a big physical team, have, you know, great talent at wide out, great talent in the running back with a chain. And, and uh, certainly uh, Johnson's a really good quarterback. I love their secondary. So, uh, we're going to, it's no secret, we're going to try to run the football and, and uh, play action off of that. And defensively, we've got to, we've got to move Johnson. He can't stand back there and, and uh, pick us apart. And that's difficult to do because <clears throat> they have so many good wide receivers and, and a chain is, is a great player coming out of, uh, all chain is a great player coming out of the backfield. Coach, th this game, uh, I, I, I think I saw where it, it has a, an end date. Uh, but how, how do you feel about playing uh, one of your biggest games at a theoretical neutral site? Well, I really like and have for years. Um, I think my first one was Oklahoma, Texas, when I was an offensive line coach several years ago in 1997 uh, and eight at Oklahoma. I love those. I love it as a coach and. I think the players like it, the fans like it. Um, the problem is, is, is recruiting. I, I know this, Paul, last year we had three of five games in a row that were considered home. Two of those we went to Dallas, and the other one, one of those we went to Dallas, and the other we went to Little Rock. And so, therefore, we're on the road four or five games that were supposed to be home three or five games. So, uh, very, very uh, difficult on the players. Certainly recruiting, uh, I know Kirby's talked about it as well, but uh, recruiting, you don't have that many opportunities and you want the kids uh, when you can get them on campus. Uh, so, but as far as an atmosphere, I just, I don't think there's anything better than half the crowd as, as Texas A&M and half the crowd as Arkansas. It's, it's a thrill to go into Dallas Cowboys Stadium and be a part of it. It really, really is. And, and I know, obviously, uh, you know, that, that stadium, which if you haven't been to it, uh, for those watching and listening, I mean, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. Uh, and, uh, you know, it was, you know, the whole concept was to uh, really compliment Jerry Jones. And I've seen him on your campus, and I, I know you, he's not there often. He's got his own issues these days. But, but what does he mean, uh, Jerry Jones mean, to the University of Arkansas? Oh, about everything. I mean, uh 
we need something, I'm sure he's one of the first guys that we go to. Um, our uh, academic center, our dining facilities uh, are named after him and his wife. And uh, he's, he's everything to us, to be, be blunt. And uh, uh, it was finally nice to see a smile on his face after <laughs> uh, we finally went in there and we won. I mean, we'd lost nine straight. You know, we're nine and one over the last 10 years in there and or over the last 10 years in the series and hadn't won in, in his stadium. And uh, so it was really f- nice to see him and Steven excited uh, uh, for the Razorbacks. And But he's he's uh, just a wonderful person and a wonderful man, generous man to a lot of things, including the Arkansas Razorbacks. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.